Hello, my friends. Here, now, you are touching reality. Here, now, everything is alive. Who else is in the mind? Memories expectations, fantasies, daydreams. Here, now, you are alive. Here, now, there is no karma. Here, now, there is no suffering. The suffering comes when we think about things. Things of the past, things that could happen, things that we would like to have hadn't happened. But here now, you simply are. Timelessly, now. Timelessly existing. And that existence is full of joyousness, full of creativity, full of beauty that wants to express itself. There is no separation, all is connected. How can we realize that? Mm -hmm. We are that. We are never absent. It's never something that is far away that we have to struggle for and reach. It is here, it is now. Without that, nothing is. We're just covering it up. And our job is to become aware how we keep on covering up it up all the time, reconstructing, reconstructing, reconstructing the same obstacle. All we have to do is become natural. Let that be that is naturally there. And when we start to have a good look at ourselves, then we become aware how many of our functionings, how many of our habits are not natural. Something that we have learned, something that we have repeated over and over, and then it's there as a trait, and it seems to be so difficult to get rid of it. The greatest difficulty is that we are not aware of it, that we some unconsciously do things, unconsciously repeat the pattern, unconsciously go on and on, turning around in the same circles. Bring the attention home, back home to that timelessness of the now. Be alive, be conscious. Be what you are. It's not difficult. We just have to do it. We have to do it because we are doing the opposite all the time without being aware of it. So we have to become aware what we are doing and then learn not to do that anymore. That is the job.
last time in the little comment I made to the YouTube I wrote something that everything is connected we just have to become aware what it is that gives us the feeling to disconnect and then let that go and somebody wrote in the comment well so what if everything is connected we have to realize the essence even two dates when she had their first awakening and then another date when there finally there was the real awakening and giving also a online address where we can find the story of her awakening. This is such a blatant contradiction. Often I have said to people about all these enlightened people, they just have, most of them, they just have changed from the illusion of not being enlightened to the illusion of being enlightened. <clears throat> as long as somebody is advertising it like that, it is obvious there is that sense of separation, that me, I'm special, me, separate from the others, want to tell them my speciality, how I am. <laughs> That they admire me. So it's me and the others, the separation. They're looking for feedback. So there is something missing. Even if somebody has shifted into a new state, even if somebody has access to subtle realms, even if somebody can do things, on subtle levels, <clears throat> as long as there persists that sense of separation, that I'm an enlightened person and there are other unenlightened persons, <laughs> there is more work to do. And it's better to give up the notion. Just be natural. Be what you are. Here now, there is such a sense of fulfillment that we don't have to go out and tell people, oh, look what great guy I am, <laughs> in order to get a kick out of it. It's still looking outside for feedback to feel fulfilled. To be is self-fulfilling. Nobody has to give the approval. <laughs> Nobody has to give a stamp and confirm you are you are what you are. Just learn to be natural. It doesn't matter how we are going about it. But the essence is that somehow or other we just catch the attention, bring it back to the source, learn to relax in that, get rooted in that, leave from that perspective, then you are free. And then there is no suffering. In manifestation there is often something or other happening that is not pleasant unhappy circumstances, but this is not affected by that. Superficially, we may be grieving, but at the same time, there is that awareness. Here, now, there is something that is absolutely not affected by it, full of joyousness of existence, full of that 
fullness, full of fulfillment. It's fulfilled by itself. Need not be approved by anyone. Let's live like this in the present. Here. Now. In manifestation, there is time, it's passing, there is a story. What's the difficulty? We deal with it, sometimes we have to think ahead. So what? You're still here now. Sometimes memories come. So what? You're still here now. Here now we are aware of a memory. Here now we are aware of a possible thing that may develop, so do certain planning. But we don't have to get lost in it, not get worried about it. Simply do things with a lot of common sense on the relative level. There's absolutely not co no contradiction of being intuitive, being connected with that inner guidance. <clears throat> and on the practical level, we just use a lot of common sense. Things come, we deal with them, and we let them go. And all the time, there is that timelessness. All the time, we can be rooted in that. All the time, we can be aware, no matter what is going on, nothing really happens to that. There is just the awareness of things happening, they come, they go, but the sense remains essentially the same, at the same time getting richer for the experience, observing, making it possible, and yet utterly at peace. But not stagnant. A peaceful joyousness, a dynamic, peaceful joyousness. Let's live like this. And then we can deal with the difficult circumstances that the world throws at us. If it is, sometimes there may be devastating circumstances. But something just from our habit, from our upbringing, has the tendency to think we it's our duty to be very, very worried about it. <laughs> but it is not. The best we can do for ourselves and for everybody else is connected to that joyous beingness in that timelessness, and then let that flow into the relativity, into time, into the time-space continuum, into the current of events. But we don't have to be worried. We just do practical, can be practical, on the practical level. But no matter what is happening, you are peaceful, joyous, kind. Are you? Are you? <clears throat> Is there anyone here who would like to come in and say something? You are welcome to do so. Hi, Verna. It's Ravi here. Hello, Ravi. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about... Um, like, I know at night time it's good for me to be in bed by a certain time just better for my health yes and yet i 
often don't go to bed at that time. Mm-hmm. And then I go, okay, tomorrow I'm going to do it. But <laughs> then I don't. <laughs> Can you talk a, a little bit about self-sabotage? Uh-huh. I think the greatest sabotage in that case is that when you are not going to bed at the time when you think you should go to bed because it's healthy, that after that you think it's unhealthy that I'm not going to bed at that time. You can be reasonable and especially if you have a bit a health problem that, that you are sensitive to influences, it's good to be somewhat reasonable but at the same time, then when you're not doing what you think that would be the best, that would be the ideal, the thought that this is not good is doing more damage than that you are not going to bed at that time. <laughs> so when it happens that uh, you are not following the rules that you create in your head, what you should do, that after that, that at that time you relax and think, so what? I am what I am. No matter whether physically I'm now in bed and sleep or not. That your fullness comes from inside. And then, yes, on the material level, uh, the body needs a bit of attention, especially if the body is sensitive to health problems. And it's better to be somewhat reasonable, but at the same time, when you are not following those rules, the greatest sabotage is not that you're going later to bed, but that you think it's not good what I'm doing. (laughs) That is hurting more. It doesn't give a green light to do all kinds of nonsense. That's Let's be reasonable. Let's deal with our life and the external circumstances with common sense. But then often something happens, we are doing things that is not according to our ID, what would be ideal. And then you can think, so what? You relax and don't get tense about it. Then It's not so much the fact that you are not following your rule that is the self-sabotage, but what is happening in the head. Oh, oh, no good. I'm again no good. I will will get punished for it. I will suffer for it. (laughs) That is doing more harm. Mm. And why... why um, that's really good to hear so but why why wouldn't i go to i guess like my question why wouldn't i go to bed on time also comes from a space of there's something wrong so maybe if i just relax around the rules that i if i don't stick to a rule then it would be easier to kind of commit to that, right. not to feel so rebellious against it, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Since you, you had a lot of health problems, you can, but you don't have to make strict rules, but you can give indications it would be better maybe to sleep a bit earlier, but then you don't have to be a stickler about it <laughs> sticking to the and uh, and be pissed with yourself that you don't do it why would you not do it because at that time you feel you don't feel like doing so you, you feel more inclined not to do so <laughs> out of habit but then if you feel that habit is not really not good then you can also gradually change that habit and not be upset with yourself when you are not exactly following the rules that you have set for yourself.
We think these things are more important than they are. They all have their value. They all have their influence. What we eat has an influence. Uh, and our daily rhythm has an influence. In what place we are living has an influence. With what kind of people we are dealing has an influence. But then if we make this too important, then we give all those circumstances more power than what they deserve. Arrange your life as reasonable as you can. At the same time, remind yourself the real power, the real healing power also comes out of yourself and is not so much dependent on always to having the ideal circumstances. And then you are also much freer and not afraid that, oh, if I'm making a mistake, then I will suffer again. <laughs> Thank you, Fiona. You're welcome. You're welcome. How are you? How are you? How are you? <laughs> Is there anybody else who would like to come? Welcome. To have a cert to have a certain rhythm is helpful in many ways. To have a certain timetable may be very helpful. But we don't have to think then that is somehow a low and become sort of slaves of that low, rule, of that law that we have created. First time I was in the cave, I kept a very strict, strict routine. And then when I went back the second time, I thought, hmm, now I'm not going to have a routine like this. I'm just doing, being spontaneously as it comes. And then gradually, all by itself, without my thinking about it, still a routine developed. I didn't mind, okay, so it is. And if we easily can, we can very well have a routine. So much of the daily life, after all, is routine stuff. But we can learn that even when we repeat day after day certain things, that we then are still present, that we then live in the moment, even if it's simple things that we are doing over and over again, day after day after day, that we don't spend the time somehow dreaming away somewhere. But then we may have ideas how one should be as a spiritual person, as a sadha, what one can do, what one cannot do. And often these guidelines help how to behave. Most of the people need that in order to somehow find their way and have a certain stability. But it is all about the momentary manifestation. What counts is that we connect. And then if we externally don't always adhere to what we think would be the ideal thing, then that doesn't matter if we still connect. We can, re we can take the useful part of it, but not impose it as something that becomes heavy and actually starts to handicap ourselves, our creativity our beautiful 
beingness by simply uh, having them to follow rules created by us or created by others. You are free, inherently free. We have never had any real bondage in our being. The bondage is on a material level. There are limitations and most of the bondages that we are creating is totally in the mind. Mental stuff that we are creating. And we can learn to look at it clearly and see what it is useful, what helps us, what makes it easier for us than to connect to connect with that essence. And those things that don't make it easier, we don't have to take so serious. And even if we break the rules, then we may connect it. Instead of then thinking, oh my God, what I'm doing is wrong, what I'm doing is not good, so this is going to have bad consequences, just be connected here now. And uh, whatever is happening is happening, it comes, it's there, we deal with it, it's going, and maybe we're coming back more to fit into what we think is best, without getting all tense and attached to it. This is a magic show. This whole world is not as real as it is appears. This is a magic show where we are diving into consciousness dives into this magic show and plays along for some time for getting experience, getting richer for the experience. We don't have to take this whole damn story so serious. It's very momentary. We think, oh, human lifetime, but momentary, it's a long story. The continuity that we are creating in the memory makes it appear to be a long story. But actually the experiences are more flashes, momentary flashes here. Now, if there is a flash and actually you let go and the attention without being aware of it, dives into the source to keep the strength. But there is a new flesh and the attention dives in the source that that inner strength can come and keep it up and keep make the experience possible. It's momentary experiences, momentary flashes that we string together with memory and then we think, oh, but it's a very, very long story, this human story. You are timeless. There is no long story for yourself. When we are connected with that, when we are rooted in that, then we can deal with the external circumstances that come and go in a very playful way, not being foolish. And even if something foolish happens, okay, then we face the consequences and deal with it. And if we are doing foolish things that really create pain, that create suffering for us or for ourselves around, if we are attentive, if we are alert, if we are natural, we stop doing that. But at the same time, we don't have to be tense about what is right, what is wrong, what is right, what is wrong, you are here. Prior to that. And if we take that perspective, then, as I said, we can go about it with common sense. And if there are things that we know they are not good for our manifestation, we can learn to avoid it. And if it still somehow happens, then so what? 
you are still here now, timeless, prior to all this. This world is not as real as it appears. We can go about it playfully. What matters is that conscious connection to the essence and that we can strengthen, increase, it make it more conscious from moment to moment, no matter what we are doing. Okay, I'm asking again. Is there anyone who would now like to come in and say something? Hello, Werner. Hello, Dial. Uh, sometimes my meditation happened better than usual, and I feel I'm really aware of each breath in each breath out and uh, I inspired but uh, then I got expectation oh I'm already sometimes uh, only on the breaths I am stop thinking for some time so when is somebody when is start special effects happening and uh, I think this expectation disturb uh, my practice. So what a correct attitude not to have expectation and what really we should be focused on meditation and not waiting anything. Right. <clears throat> In the beginning, it may be very inspiring to have this kind of goals we want to reach. Try and meditate and work and work harder and then at the end you get some Adi. <laughs> you get to something or other. But then, right, when you are at your stage, you can let these things go. And the very fact of just being here and being connected is all that is needed. Then you can continue like that and just see, wait and see what happens without having the idea this and this would happen because I have read or heard it, that and that should happen because I have read it or heard it, because somehow, after all, this is the goal of spirituality. No, you can just be and then open. And again, like a child, full of curiosity, full of wonder, just be and see where it is. It is leading you. Okay, Werner. Yes, it's need some kind of uh, more skillful understanding right. how to deal. You still can have your meditation. And if you feel that you are meditating less and it feels less good, if it's possible, then you meditate. What you feel is good for you. But then uh, that is mainly on the psychophysical manifestation, those experiences, that sense of uh, subtler energy that starts to manifest. Essentially, you are the same. And so use that time when you are practicing to just connect with that and then how the experience is unfolding, how the experience is manifesting, how the experience changes, let it come and happen without having too much the idea from what you have heard from others, what should happen. Yes. Thank you, Werner. Hario. 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 A goal can be a very motivating force. Having a goal that we have somehow put in our consciousness, in our mind, because we read about it, because teachers talk about it, because the tradition talks about it, can be a very inspiring force. 
And that inspiration is very helpful. That instead of just stumbling along and being half, half asleep most of the time, then such a goal is inspiring us to be awake because we have the idea that they have to be awake and alert in order to get closer to that goal. And so for that, it serves its purpose. But then when it's becoming more natural to just be, when it's happening quite often, that one just finds oneself in a peaceful, joyous state, then we can also let go of those ideas of a goal and just bring, not try to get simply stuck with the, maybe the bliss of an experience or just the relief that there is peace because usually the mind goes room, 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 room. So we can enjoy it, but at the same time not grab it and think I want to hold it and I want to have that experience now all the time. Just be as ease, at ease, at peace, as good as we can, and then see how the experience is unfolding. And that is going to be different from one story to another story. So for that, those systematic teachings about step by step by step by step, how you proceed, they can be helpful as an inspiration, but then they have also their handicap by, because they are limiting the beauty and the creativity of consciousness that we exactly have the idea first that should happen, then that should happen, and then I should experience this. And, and then instead of letting that inner beauty that would like to express and manifest itself, we prevent it from unfolding natural beauty. Okay, okay, now I'm asking. Is there anyone who would like to come in? Hi, Bruno. Hello, Nava. Um, lately, I've been feeling much more at peace with myself, more accepting of myself. Um, it's like I see my faults, but I just don't feel all upset about them. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's quite new, <laughs> um, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> um, I feel, I, I've spoken a lot about how I worry about other people and I try to help them and I, I feel less need for that somehow. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, you know, who am I to think that I can change somebody else's way and their path and whatever. Um, I'm taking a few days right now to myself at home and it's quiet and, and I rest when I need to and I eat when I need to and it's just, it's very nice and very relaxing. Yeah. Um, in a few days time, I'm back out into the world and I I just feel like I don't want to do that. Um, it, it, I don't know how to put it, it all seems so foreign. Yeah. Um, yeah. It just feels really like, you know, what am I doing here? <laughs> yes. And um, who can I share really share with what what is going on in my heart lately and how it feels mm -hmm. and um i don't quite know how to do that yeah um right and there i give you a 
three so far twice. Don't hold on to that ID that you have to share. If you are with somebody and it stumbles out spontaneously, and then it's perfectly right. But otherwise, most of the time, actually, it's best that we just don't talk about what's going on inside. Because then instead of inspiring people, they start to have ideas and concept and argue, and it's like it's taking the beauty and the strength out of it. You share automatically, all the time, with your being. And the, if you are becoming more powerful, more powerfully peaceful, if your attention is sinking deeper to the essence, then this is sharing itself all the time with the whole rest of manifestation. And especially physically, on the physical level, those people who are around you, they are being benefited by what is happening in you. And that is all the sharing that is needed. And if on top of that it happens that it feels creative, that it feels good, that uh, it's an exchange that is beneficial for, for those who are present, we can also talk about. But basically, better not think too much that you need to share it in that way. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's um, an issue with me that I, I feel like I want to talk about it. Yeah. And um, I know that it's a mistake. I mean, you, you cannot say absolutely that it's a mistake. Sometimes it's right, but not that it is a compulsion to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, and I think it gets to be a little bit like that with me. Um, I had a, it's a very gentle experience of um, that everything, everything was inside of me. It wasn't that I was a part of the universe. It was that everything was inside of me. And um, Somehow there was great peace experiencing that. Yeah, yeah. That it was all it was all here, and I yeah. kept kind of tapping my my body. It's all here. It's all yes. here. Great. Right. And um, so, on the one hand, it's very good sharing that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if I was to say that to anybody, they would just, um, you know. What are you talking about? Right. Right. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure about this need of mine to share, but it seems to be there. Yeah, you just observe, and then when the uh, tendency comes now to go out and talk about what you're experiencing, you just for a moment take a pause and look at it and watch it, and then in your guts you feel whether it is the right thing to do or maybe better one just doesn't talk about it. When you really have this kind of experiences, there are experiences, they come, they are there, they go, but still there is a wealth in it, there is value in it, it is inspiring, it is purifying, but then if we go out and talk about it, then often it's like the purity and the innocence and the beauty of it gets a bit lost, because exactly then maybe also a bit the, the attitude of pride and wanting to show, and then but also then you present it to people and they are finding it strange and then you start to discuss about it and take it to pieces and it's like there are a bit the, the value starts a bit to dissipate mm-hmm. yeah. I felt that very early when when I was the first time on the way to Kerala to visit Amma with an American man, we stopped in an ashram 
halfway and stayed there for a week. And we took, incidentally, there was a young yoga teacher that was doing yoga lessons and also other spiritual lessons. And I actually, I liked it a lot, but at the end of the teaching, he always made a session that now let's share, let's share the mm -hmm. experiences. Mm -hmm. And while, although I liked the whole rest there, I felt somehow this is not really helpful. It's like then it's inviting to boast. It's inviting to, uh, even if somebody tells something, then that didn't really enrich the experience of, of the others. This, this going out and talking about it often is not helpful. There's a lot of this going on here in Tiruvannamalai. People are here doing some practice and then they sit in the tea shop and tell each other all their great stories what they are experiencing. Yeah. What they are experiencing. And then it becomes a bit like a sport instead of, and, and, the, and mm -hmm. the beauty of it is getting wasted. Yeah. So don't make a rule that you should never talk about it. But at the same time, uh, think twice when that the urge comes. Your real sharing is happening all the time. When you are more composed, when you are stronger, when you are more harmonious, it simply radiates and sharing itself all the time. There's no duty to go out and talk about it to share. <laughs> but sometimes if people come together sincerely and they talk about their, uh, their practices and they talk about what is happening, that can be mutually beneficial. That is also there. But most of the time, this going out and wanting to tell is more like throwing a bit the, the essence of it out instead of keep that beauty, the memory of it, the thought reconnecting with the scene, keep it in yourself that it keeps on lifting you up. Mm -hmm. Are you home? Are you home? Yeah. I wish you well. <laughs> Is there anybody else who would like to come in? If somebody is with a teacher, and then there are inner experiences, and one feels like discussing that with the teacher, that is something else, and that can be helpful. One can get pointers, one can get guidance, one get the, can sort of get the confirmation that one is on the good way. In the, in the good direction. <clears throat> but otherwise, talking much about what is happening inside is usually not bringing much benefit. In the spiritual circles, it is going on all the time. Then this one tells of this fantastic experience, and that one of, tells of their experience, and then they start to <coughs> so measure whose experience is better. <laughs> and it's like throwing some things out in the marketplace that could be precious, right? Just when it is there. It's also so easy 
that uh, without our knowing that when somebody talks about their experience, there is that <coughs> that wanting to go out and impress people and hopes consciously or unconsciously for the feedback of them being quite duly impressed. It comes in so subtly and so sneaky. And then this is again counterproductive. This is again adding to the firmity of the idea that we are a person separate from others. What is happening, what is precious, is usually happening peacefully in when we are alone, but also when we are in a crowd, but still it's happening. And the whole crowd around may not have the slightest notion that it is happening. And this kind of openings, this kind of experiences, it's not something we have to chase after and think this is what is needed. But for they come, they are there, they go. But still, there is a purifying aspect of it. There is an inspiring aspect of it. There is something very precious in it that can help us become stronger, to go deeper, to unfold. And often, if we bring that out to the discussion, a good part of that wealth is getting lost. Also, if somebody else says, but now uh, this doesn't matter, this is no good, I've read in that, in that scriptures, this teaching says it should happen like that, then, <laughs> then one starts to argue about it, and then it's like whatever beauty, whatever preciousness was there, is starting to be hacked into pieces. <laughs> But as I said just now to Nava, sometimes it is perfectly right. It may come spontaneously. Two or three or a number of people are together. And then it, something comes out spontaneously and then it is also received with the proper attitude by those who hear it. And it's by it's inspiring and enriching for everybody. But those those occasions, those moments, they are rather rare. Most of the time it's better to keep that well instead of giving it out. <laughs> Not because me, I, I want to keep it for myself, simply because it is remains more precious. It keeps on holding on to that preciousness, which again is inspiring and supporting in our own practice. We don't have to chase after experiences, but if the, those moments, those experiences, they are helping us. It's still a wealth that is there, that is giving a good pointer, a good direction, and is supporting from day to day our further spiritual exploration. So for that reason, I always recommend people don't talk too much about it. It's not that we are withholding something egoistically, in contrary. We are making sure that the value of it is not getting lost, and then that strength, the joyousness of it, is sharing all by itself. It is very popular in groups now. 
to do things and then share. <laughs> On a certain level, that may be all right when it starts to put subtle and deeper. I'm not an advocate of that kind of approach because instead of being more inspiring, it's more most of the time something precious has to the tendency to simply go away. Okay. Is there anybody else who would like to come in say something? You're welcome. If nobody, I would like to ask again. Yeah. Um, uh, last time I was asking you about karma yoga. Yeah. Can you explain when we are um, doing seva, if we using our practicing like awareness and devotional feelings, it's uh, it's helpful very much. Uh, but if we will talk about just selfless actions, for example, someone cleaning the road without any payment, without any benefit, just or do some selfless actions uh, because most of actions we are doing because our ego to um, our ego getting stronger. So what uh, what do you think about it? Of course, if you do this kind of selfless actions, then that uh, is better than going through your life and hitting everybody away <laughs> and being impossible for other people. But still, it's a tricky business. Most of the time, it serves mainly to improve the ideas one has about oneself. That after that, I can think after all now I'm a good person. I have been doing this and that and that. Uh, today's good action, I can number eight, enumerate my good actions that I've done and have to develop good actions about uh, good ideas about myself. <laughs> if you are not holding on to that me and the others these actions, they happen spontaneously when you come into a situation without having to think that you are doing now a good thing. I'm not saying anything against, like, somebody can also choose that as a profession, that, like a social worker, that they are going, really going around and helping people. And this is perfectly a nice thing to do, certainly better than many other ways of spending the time. But as long as we are not in harmony ourselves, as long as we are clinging to that me, 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 taking ourselves very serious in what we are doing, even if we are doing good actions, so what is accepted as good actions, we're bringing also all that stuff into it. All our own tensions, all our own negativity. And then it's like the good and the negative, they are neutralizing itself. <laughs> so we don't have to become professional good doers. By all means, if it manifests spontaneously, you are in a situation, you keep a helping hand, it just happens. And you don't have to have then after that idea, oh, now I did really a good thing. <clears throat> we don't have to have our schedule and think, okay, today I have to do that many good actions to somehow fit into the picture of the spiritual, <laughs> spiritual person. But let us make order in ourselves. Let us bring harmony to ourselves, where there are tensions, 
where there are mental contradictions, let us deal with them and learn to remove them. And then, as I said before, the sharing is happening all the time. And sometimes it's manifesting as an action that uh, on the road you're helping something without having an idea that you want something. Or sometimes, many times, it may not manifest, but just your being is doing something good. The more you are strong and in harmony yourself, the more you are doing good just wherever you go by being there. <laughs> so, I'm not saying anything against doing good actions. Simply, we have to be careful. It's so easy then that the same thing comes in again. Me, I am doing that. So, uh, and what I'm wanting to get out of it, if I'm not getting it from the other people, at least I can think I'm a good person. I can have to develop better and better ideas about myself. And that again is, is creating a new obstacle. So by all means, be good, give a helping hand wherever it feels, wherever it feels right, wherever spontaneously it comes, but you don't have to run after that in order to think that you are you have to do that in order to fulfill your spiritual duty. <laughs> okay, Werner, it's becoming clearer. But then in this context, I want to ask one more question. Yes. Uh, recently, in Russia, was popular a new teaching. It's kind of magic, how to improve our life. Yeah. And the practice of this, this, this teaching was doing, uh, uh, how to say, funny, strange actions in public. Mm -hmm. For example, you do in public something very strange, decorate yourself or doing unusual things. And they explain <coughs> if we have some problem, it's uh, turning on in our mind and we uh, uh, somehow these thoughts support the problems we have around. Mm -hmm. But when we're doing something absolutely useless and funny and strange, and these thoughts cannot continue, it's for the mind, it's uh, very shocked. What is what I'm doing? I'm very stupid. I'm doing stupid things. And these um, regular thoughts are stops, and then the person can somehow get freedom for some moments, relieve some energy, and his life may improve. For example, if he doing such rituals, funny, strange actions, and then if he have some desires, these desires may, may fulfilled very quickly. What do you think about this method? Uh -huh. uh, uh, that, that was also with the purpose that desires get fulfilled, that we can manifest in our life what we want. That's the point. I yes, see. mainly this purpose. Uh, yeah. I see, I see. <laughs> well, this is a new, this is a new one. <laughs> many, people are, <laughs> this, many people are busy with putting their mind in manifesting, manifesting their life that uh, I want to, I want this, I want that, and if one puts the mind properly in it and not uh, too uptight about it, then they can get better and better to, to really manifest in their life. I'm not saying basically something against that, that, that manifesting things in their life, but we should also then be very careful not to get uh, a bit addicted to that. Because then this suddenly becomes more important how much we improve our external situation instead of how much I'm really becoming more self-aware. <laughs> that is the main important thing. And the others, they, they, if some people feel like 
playing a bit with that they can. But I would be always very cautious, don't get sucked into this, then after that people try to manifest all the time. Now what you are telling me, that's something I have so far, <laughs> so far never heard. <clears throat> if the people who do so, and they are full of tension, and then they go and expose themselves in a way that maybe is a bit embarrassing, and they overcome the, their own embarrassment because of that, then, and they believe that by doing so, it's going to make it easier to manifest their desires. I think if that belief is there, then it, it will also have an effect like this. <laughs> it's... it's simply, right, the whole thing is not about being more self-aware, but uh, it's like developing the power of shaping your external circumstances more and more. And this, it's not so much the technique that matters, but the people and how they are doing it. <laughs> if it helps them to relax and getting less tense, by doing funny things in public, I can accept that it may have an influence. I certainly don't think in order to manifest you do have to go out and do funny things in public. <laughs> but if they believe that that very confrontation, that, the, that there is an intensity to do something, then one with the usual conditioning would not necessarily do out of fear what people think about me, and then overcoming that resistance may release a special energy. But then we can, we can do that also in much, <laughs> in much easier ways. But if people want to do so, <laughs> fine for, with me if they, they do so. But again, this is not the only way. There, uh, there are other, other ways people with affirmations and all kinds of stuff that they want to manifest, that they want to shape their life, the circumstances. And we, I think basically we can just give a, an intent in a good direction in the current, but then not take it so serious whether this is manifesting or not because it's much more important that we learn to be consciously conscious in the present than that we are capable of forming the circumstances. <laughs> okay, Werner, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All the stuff that is there. <laughs> <laughs> people doing crazy things in public in order to manifest their life's desires. Well, why not? Huh? <clears throat> Is there anybody else who would like to come in? Okay, then let's spend a few minutes just consciously in that energy that we have created together. Let's make use of that energy to be here. Just quiet. Make use of that intensity that has been created to help us to bring the attention deeper in our own resource.
it's most helpful if we are sitting somewhere to be somewhat straight, but we don't have to be stiff. And if somebody is also walking, to gently walk along is also right. And helpful. Let the breath happen. Just be aware of that manifestation of life. That ongoing rhythmic movement. Air is filling up the lungs. Air is being and out again. But in that rhythmic movement, there's also something deeper, subtler happening. Every inhalation is also like your feeling of psychophysical manifestation is prana which is not oxygen, prana is energy. And with every exhalation, this prana that is collected is radiating throughout the whole system. Harmonizing, healing, strengthening this psychophysical manifestation. And by harmonizing this psychophysical manifestation, it becomes more transparent and it's radiating in all directions. The peace, the harmony. And you are right at the center of it. You are that source of life that makes all this possible. So let the breath go in the breath, flow out in one's own natural rhythm and relax in that. Just be here now.
And if thoughts come, if issues come, if the mind wants to argue and discuss, just don't get interested. Redirect your attention to be consciously conscious here now. Follow the breath again. Be aware of the breath. It's happening now. It's starting the timelessness of the now. Thoughts are coming, don't get interested. Let them come, let them go. There is no suffering. Just be at ease, at peace, in touch with that timelessness. Intensely alert and yet relaxed. Awake and yet relaxed. All kinds of sounds are always coming. So what? They come, they go. You are aware of the sounds against the background of the silence, of the peace. That is never absent.
and then gently take again more conscious position of the physical form, still connecting with the now. And then we can get up and we can go out, move in the world and still connect with the timelessness, the basic, peaceful, joyous timelessness. I wish you all well. Are you? Are you? Are you?